Welcome back, friends, to the shop. This video was requested by you guys. I posted a picture of my of the contents of my toolbox on Instagram last week, and a lot of folks asked if I would do a breakdown video, talk about what's inside of it, why I chose it, and uh, why it is the way it is. What's inside this box is a culmination of over a decade of creating uh, YouTube content, um, and, and all my experience has come to bear <laughs> to, to bring what we have right here. It happened over a long period of time. It's, you know, it's a long, it's a long process, uh, learning to create good video content. You know, of course, the bar is always rising and, and the expectations are getting higher and higher, much different than it used to be. And this is where we're at. This is where I'm at 2020, uh, what, January 2nd, January 3rd. So what you're going to see in here, everything in here is going to be the absolute um, top of the line in as far as prosumer gear goes. What's prosumer? Well, you have your consumer gear, which is your entry level, your inexpensive items. Then you have your prosumer, someone who as kind of in the middle, to go any better than, than the equipment that I have in here, you're going to make the next big leap and that's into cinema. And that's a whole nother category. That starts going beyond uh, most people's budget, starts going beyond, well, if you're a one man band like myself, you, you, you just, it's not possible. I mean, just a cinema camera alone is more expensive than the entire contents of this box. What I need, uh, what I've learned over this is that you, this, you, your gear can get so complicated, so heavy that it starts to um, dictate uh, your content. If it's too much of a burden, if you have an idea, you want to tell a story, you want to make content, and your gear is so burdensome that there's so much setup and, and complication to it, find some, most times you're just going to just say, I'm not going to do it. I just can't be bothered. So you got to balance that line between having stuff that will give you good quality audio and vis video, but it also doesn't get in your way of telling the story. That is critical. And I have went back and forth with that. This is pretty, pretty bare bones, but everything in here is very purpose built and, and the best quality uh, that I could afford. How it breaks down is into three categories. We have power supply here. We have video here and we have audio here. That's what it is. So you'll notice here that I am now recording. I'm not recording into cameras anymore. Uh, we'll talk about that. Well, let's just get into it. Let's go into the camera. So this is my A camera. My main camera is going to be the Canon EOS R. Uh, this is their first mirrorless camera. This currently, and I don't care what anyone says, is the best camera out there for content creators. I know some folks are asking, well, what happened to the M50 that you did a video on some time back? Uh, the M50 was not a professional camera and it didn't hold up. Maybe a month or so before it broke, um, I gave it to a friend. I, I, I'm too hard on stuff. I can't have consumer grade stuff. I got to have um, better quality stuff. The reason why this camera is the best out there currently, and I know the Sony guys are going to dispute this and the Panasonic guys, but there is no dispute because here's the deal. Sony doesn't have this. And as a one-man band, if you don't have a cameraman, someone to do change your settings and to be, able, to be able to have a flip-out screen that you can monitor yourself and make changes is critical. It's, it's, if I had to go back to with, without this, I would just stop making videos. It's, it's too cumbersome. Sony doesn't have that. Sony also has fiddly menus, poor ergonomics. I don't like their color. Um, and they don't have that flip-out screen. Panasonic has a flip-out screen, but they have no good autofocus. So what this combines is the best ergos out there, um, the best build quality out there, the best autofocus out there. It che checks all the marks. You know, a camera is about more, is, a camera is more important than its specifications. And that's what happens with the camera reviews online and these guys all doing videos. And what's so funny about it is you watch these guys that are the experts in the YouTube community, all their gear is brand new brand new, hasn't been used, not beat up. I wonder, are they actually content creators? Are they actually filmmakers sometimes? Or are they just reviewing gear? You know, I'm, I'm a user, I'm not a, I'm not a camera gear reviewer. I use this every day. This is my toolbox. This is a toolbox that is, is important to me as the plumbers or, or the electrician's van or the painter's van. It's, it is what I need uh, to do my job. And I need to have the best qu quality stuff that I can get. Just like when I was an outboard mechanic in high school, I had snap-on tools. You know, this is the equivalent of that. So just so you kind of figure out where I'm coming from. How I have the EOS, EOS, EOS R set up is uh, with a 16 to 35 lens. Now, 
some of you say, well, that's a wide angle lens. You know, that's not ideal for content creation. Well, true. If you're shooting full frame sensors without crop, the 24 to 70 is if you could only have one is the best option. These are both F4 lenses. I've never felt the need to go any faster than an F4. The 2.8 glass and stuff, I, I, it's nice, but it's just for video and what I do, it's just not necessary. These are more than adequate. I like to shoot in 4K. Not because I particularly really want that resolution on the back end, but the 4K gives me so many options for a post-production. If I don't have my framing or composition right, or I want to like, like if I want to pull in hard to something, I have the re resolution to spare. Edit, shoot, edit in 4K, upload in 1080, uh, what a lot of people do. So the reason why the wide angle lens is when I'm shooting on 4K, unfortunately, this camera has a 0.7 crop. What does that mean? Well, if you were to put a 100 millimeter lens on this and you're gonna shoot in 4K, it's gonna crop it up uh, to make that about a 170 millimeter. So that's too tight. That makes, too, that makes a 24 to 70 way too tight for inside. But if I put the 16 to 35 on, that, that basically makes it very similar. Uh, and then I can use my 4K. The other thing that's, that has really changed my life is that there, now this is the new, this is the new M, M mount system. Um, and I have already invested in the EF glass, you know, so with the new mirrorless bodies, Canon has changed the mounting system. The mounting flange is different now. So not, so they didn't leave us out in the lurch here. Uh, they made an adapter. So this is an adapter ring that you can purchase. So you can shoot your EF glass on here, right? Well, they make one that has uh, an insert here for a new, neutral density filter. This is really critical if you're shooting DSLRs or mirrorless cameras and you're outside. Why? Well, we like to shoot those wide apertures, right? We want to shoot F4 or even faster sometimes to get that beautiful look, that shallow depth of field that looks so nice. Well, you can't do that when you go outside in sunlight or snow uh, because everything's overexposed. What I can do with this neutral density filter, and these are commonly, these are integrated into cinema cameras, is it's it's basically like a pair of sunglasses for your camera. So you'll see there, I can go light or dark. So when I wanna take this outside, I simply pull out the clear filter, which is nothing more than a placeholder. And then I put the neutral density filter in. Now what that gives me is the ability to, to darken that. So I can, I can get the exposure. I can still shoot wide open and get the, that beautiful look, um, but I can control it. Especially really handy in, in winter time when you're in bright snow uh, or bright sunlight. So this combination is really good and it's the only camera that I know of that you can have an ND filter in line before your lens, that way you can change lenses. So if I, I don't have to buy individual ND filters for each lens. If I wanna shoot 1080 and I wanna go back to my uh, 24 to 70, I can click that on there. I still have my ND filter. So that, if you're a filmmaker or content creator, that's something that you're gonna really absolutely wanna have. So this is my A camera, and this is, this is basically the setup. Now you see that there's no microphones on this anymore. Canon and Sony and Panasonic, whatever, whoever, uh, are really good at making cameras, but they're not in the audio business. And what you'll qu quickly learn with audio is it's really more important. The aud having good, clean audio is more important than good video. If you don't have composition right or you're a little bit shaky or you're under or overexposed, it doesn't matter near as much as poor audio. People will put up with bad video, but they will not put up with poor audio. It's too distracting. So the problem with running audio with these microphones like the Rhodes and, and such into your camera is that these cameras have terrible preamps. There is an internal recorder. Um, it sounds terrible, so a lot of folks will bypass that and, and do something like this and put it on the top. And that's okay, but again, your microphone's only gonna be as good as the preamp inside the camera, and they're hissy, and they're noisy, and they're just, they're really bad. And, and I just didn't know it uh, until recently, until I started hearing it. I'm not claiming to be an audio-visual expert, I'm only at the point now in my, in my life with understanding this, 
I know that I can hear the difference between good audio and bad audio. I can see the difference between good light, bad light, composition, the same thing. So I'm not saying that I've arrived. I'm just saying that I'm just opening the door. <laughs> you know? So that's kind of where I'm coming from. So audio has been really important. So I've recently got rid, rid of that and that has really freed me up not having all of that junk hanging on here. I'll tell you what, my, the biggest Achilles heel that I've had in content creation is the audio component of it. I have lost and wasted more time and more footage with bad audio because of the way it goes into the camera. It's got this silly little mic plug that's very vulnerable. I've got cables. I mean, you've seen pictures of my cameras in the back. It's got gaffers tape and a bunch of wires. I'm just a mess. And that makes for an unwieldy, heavy camera. Now I've been liberated from that. No more audio in the camera. All audio goes into a digital audio recorder. And I, I, I resisted doing this for a long time because I thought it was gonna make my workflow so much more arduous, but I found just the opposite. It gives me a freedom, it gives me a quality that I've never experienced before. And I simply have an audio file, I can take the card out, put it in, sync it up with, with Final Cut Pro, very simple. So that's, um, I'll just delay some background right there. My B camera is, uh, uh, Canon 5D Mark IV. This was the first professional camera that I bought. I used this for about a year. I love this camera. Very tough, very strong, definitely a professional body. Um, the biggest gripe about this and why I, uh, it's no longer my A camera is it doesn't have that flip out screen. Don't underestimate the importance of that. Um, so this has been relegated to my B camera. And in all honesty, my B camera actually is my cell phone, which I'm recording on right now with the audio going into the Premix 3. So um, back and forth, but that's, I do keep that in here um, for that. Now, speaking of cell phone, if you're gonna be using a phone and the phone that I shoot on is the latest gen Apple uh, 11 Pro Max, whatever it is, the one with the good camera, you need a way to hold it because those things are kind of fiddly and they don't have dedicated buttons and so, so this is the rig that I built to hold my cell phone. So what we have here is we've got a Pro Media Gear, Pro Media Gear base all my bases, by the way, are all Acra Swiss. This is a proprietary or a open source um, dovetail design so that it doesn't matter what camera I have, what tripod, everything is universal so I can mix and match anything. Any light, anything I have has this base on it. I can use any combination that I want uh, and that makes things very fast and seamless. So this is a, just an old PC70. This is a proprietary base that went on my, one of my old cameras that I no longer needed. And then this is a shoulder pod uh, cell phone mount. Do I recommend it? No, it's just, it's just the one that I've used forever, uh, or I've, had, I've used several of them. This here is a Pro Media Gear. You'll see a, a trend here. I love Pro Media Gear stuff. It's probably among the very best, top of the line stuff. Uh, this is a cinema handle that can just screw on here. So I can also put these on my cameras. So if I want to have an extra handle, you know, to balance things out, it's very versatile. Everything, of course, keeping it pro media gear, all the parts mix and match. So there's this piece, there's a shoulder pod, there's a double stud to stick that on there. I, I clamped the phone on there. Now I've got a handle. You know, the way that these cameras mount into these goofy little deals, you know, you, if you're moving them around like on a magic arm or a tripod or a video head, you know, you'll, you'll twist them out. There, there's no strength there. So the strength comes from this aluminum handle that's tied into the base so I can move things around. It also gives me the option of putting a couple of cold shoes on here for accessories like microphones or even lights. I've done that before. So this is a very good system right here to hold my cell phone. Um, probably, the, probably the only one around um, since I built it out of just kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. And that stores right in there. And the final, I don't know why they make the threads on that so long. Uh, the final compartment here is just random things. There's gonna be some microphone uh, stuff, ex an extra microphone, uh, clips, lab pieces, um, a microfiber cloth for cleaning lenses. On my media cards, I'll go in here in this waterproof Pelican case. If you're gonna spend all day shooting, you wanna make sure you protect that, make sure that those are safe. Regarding media cards, I shoot with the Sony uh, Tough Cards. These are a military grade um, card that are super, super fast uh, and very tough. Waterproof, much thicker, Just you just feel them and you can tell that they're tough. Everything about them, they're made to last. They're made for guys that use these things 
uh, all the time, every day. And those stay in here uh, with duplicates. And then there's just some small things in here, um, a lens cleaning pad, um, extra cables, um, studs, you know, things to interface my cell phone into microphones. And also you'll notice, I forgot to mention that this box is completely powered. So there are actually 10 USB cables that run to everything in here is always charging. So when I come in at night and I'm start editing, I'll plug this in. Now everything's electrified. My premix, my audio recorder is powered. All the batteries for my Sennheiser, Sennheiser AVX is being powdered. My microphones are being charged. My cell, there's a cell phone here. I can charge that. Uh, my camera batteries are being charged. And if I unplug this, then it flips over automatically to a big lithium battery under there that continues to charge everything in the box except for the Canon batteries, which have to run off of 120, so that's not an option for me. So everything's charging. So I'm out in the field. If I'm shooting all day long, everything stays charged. I never have to change batteries on my AVX. I just, it's, it's something, I, it's just one thing I don't have to think about anymore. So that's why all the cords and all that stuff are the way they are. This is, of course, the neutral density filter and its case. So I'll take the ND filter off when I'm shooting inside because it's too dark. Okay, so that covers video. For audio, I um, have recently, I guess in the last six months, switched over to the Sennheiser AVX wireless system. Now this is, I could do a whole video on this alone. I love it so much because it's changed my life. As I said, audio has been a, a huge problem for me, um, being fiddly. Now we're, we, have, we have movie quality pro grade audio equipment. I don't necessarily get those results because I'm still learning it. You know, the learning curve is so steep. It's so steep on this stuff, guys. I mean, I, it's, I, I'm not complaining. There's nothing worse than some guys that makes YouTube videos for a living, you know, whinging about something. But I am telling you that it is a job. It's a huge learning curve. To start from the beginning, I mean, what you're doing is you're doing many, many trades. You, you are a, a photographer, you're a videographer, you're a video editor, you're a sound man, you're a grip, uh, you're a, a marketing guy, you are a, an actor, you're a talent, you know, all of those things, they all come into play and you all have to learn them at once. It's not like you can start on, oh, I'm just gonna focus on the video and I'm gonna neglect the audio or I'm gonna neglect this or that. You have, they all have to come up at once and that's why it's so intimidating. And you've got, <clears throat> with that being said, your tools can't get in your way and your tools have gotta be good and they've gotta be reliable. Um, they've, you've gotta assist you in telling your story not hindering you and taking the store, taking it away. So that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. So my AVX system, how this works now is that, of course, this is full wireless. There's two components to a lav system. You have the receiver, which I love the way these AVX receivers plug in. They go directly into the SLR jacks into this. So now we're recording directly into the video monitor. So when I'm doing like our, our 66 books discussion, um, I can feed three mics into this and I get one nice stereo video file that I can go in sync with all the clips. That's really high quality. I, you know, the thing about having this AVX system and, and the new Premix 3, um, the video, digital video recorder, is that audio, I used to always be worried about it. It's just something I don't even think about anymore. I never have to worry about the batteries because I keep my, my packs in here. Actually, I have two of these and I just ordered the th third, you probably heard the dog barking, UPS just brought the third AVX. So I will have three AVX systems, three of these, so that it's gonna be simple to go. So if I need three channels of audio, if I'm doing an interview or uh, I wanna go, uh, you were working out in the garden, I want everyone to be mic'd, I've never been able to do that in the past. You know, I had some goofy splitters on my camera and left channel going to this one and this, and it, it's always been, uh, unsatisfactory. Now these will be all ready to go. They'll all be charged sitting in here. Bam, bam, bam. One, two, three. If I want to mic someone, I give them a mic. I pull out, you know, one of the, the lav mics, plug it in, clip it on, and we are good to go. Recording right in here. Clean, nice, professional audio. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Regarding mics, now be careful when you're buying your AVX system, they're going to come in two packages. There's going to be a cheaper one. You know, there's going to be one for like $600, $700, and then there's going to be one for $900. What that extra money gives you is a premium grade microphone, and you want to spend the money and get the microphone. These microphones are very, very good, and they're very tough. I will attest to that. These are the MKE-2s. Uh, the build quality of the Sennheiser, I mean, it's a whole 
another level above the Rode gear. I've loved the Rode gear. I've used it for years and, and I like that they're an innovative company, but I've never have liked the sound. It's too shrill for me. It hurts my ears. It makes me, I don't like it when I'm editing and listening to it through my headphones. What you get with the Sennheiser is you get a rich, deep, a much deeper, more natural sounding microphone, in my opinion. And the build quality with the Rode stuff just isn't there. Yeah, they have a great warranty, but I was constantly calling them, getting things warrantied and lav mics. It's just not the same. You know, you get what you pay for. If you're going to be doing this every day, you've got to have the good stuff. You've got to have professional gear, just like if you're a mechanic. You know, you're not probably not ma making your living with, snap, with anything less than snap-on tools or the equivalent, right? So I have um, four of these. Uh, three now, but I'm soon to have four. Uh, backups for everything. Everything that you do when it comes to electronics and wires and batteries and stuff, at least two redundancy and three is even better. So that is the system. I never even have to take this out. It's all, I just built a little holder for it in there. I open my box. As long as I have this box within, you know, 50 yards or so where I'm shooting, I'm totally good. If I need to pull this out, I've got big L mount batteries I can snap on. I can take it with me and it'll run all day, but I haven't found that. You know, I, I can always have this box around. It's, it's, got my, it's got everything I needed it. So lab mics will be charging in here with their, with their everything's got its own cable. Now, I still use this from time to time. I don't know if it's gonna stay in the kit, but these, uh, the Pro Video Mic Pro, Rode Video Mic Pro, this is the best one that they've made because it, the way, the features it has, the low pass, and the, it's got a safety track. So it records if you set it one high and one low. So if you're clipping, and it really saves you in, in many cases. But be under no illusion that you're gonna get great sound from one of these. Um, I would call it more adequate, and that's, if you're no more than three or three feet, four feet's pushing it. But if you have, if you're under this illusion that you're gonna just buy one of these and snap it on the top of your camera and you're gonna be good to go for every situation, prepare to be disappointed. It's if you're mobile and you're moving around a lot like I do in my content, the lav mic is the only way to go. Where this comes in nice is if you have a camera and you're only recording one channel in and you're using a lav mic, well, that's good for you, but if you want to walk up and talk to someone, then you can't do it. You, you can't say anything because or you can't hear what they say because they're not mic'd. And why I kept this on here with the lav mic was it gave me a second track, not only an emergency track for in case something happened to my lav mic, battery or rubbing on clothing or who knows what. Sometimes I was able to salvage video because I had that secondary track on there. The other benefit of it is if you're walking up to someone and you're laved, then at least you'll get some audio. But um, what I'm gonna do in the future is I'm gonna plan a little bit more. Everyone's gonna have their own lav mic um, and we're gonna have a lot cleaner, better audio. So this of course rides in here. This may not be staying in here, but it is for now with its own cord. Of course, you know, Rode, I do love their innovation. You know, they've come out some, some really good things. This is something that I found to be just so handy. This is their little mini lav system. Um, it, of course, has its own plugs there as well. It's in there always charging and ready to go. I put Velcro on them, so if I think that I might need a lav uh, on a camera, I can snap those together. They have a built-in um, cold shoe mount or hot shoe mount. You can snap them in there. And when you need a mic in a hurry, I can pull this off here, and there I've got a mic that I can either clip on someone's lapel or clip on my own, or it could even be handheld like a news reporter. Is the sound good? No, I would give the sound about a four out of a one to 10, but I would give the convenience factor and the innovative nature of it a 10 because it just solves a lot of problems. You know, it's, always, it's all about having tools that solve problems. So it's important enough for me that I keep it in there. I rarely use it, but when I need it, I need it. So if you don't have money to buy an AVX system and you want to just get into a really cheap lav system, you can use this and you can plug in a regular lav and you can get acceptable results. A um, whole lot better than in camera. So that's kind of, that rides in there. Um, will it stay? Don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So the whole case, of course, is encompassed, people are going to ask here, into a Nanook, this is a 933. Nanooks are like um, Pelican cases, but better in my opinion. Better, I have lots of both of them. Um, I think the quality of these are better, just the finishes and the touches, the latches are far superior, the handle is far superior. I just like, the, it just feels better to the touch and I think that they're just better laid out, just better features. And they're made in Canada, 
You know, we want to support our, our Canadian friends because they're good people, aren't they? Um, so that's it. That's my case. I don't know if there's anything else I can share. It's um, uh, very good. You know, there's not a lot of stuff here, but what's here is good quality and is very usable. I can grab this case. My other bag is my, my mounting, you know, mounting solutions, which I've put a lot of thought and effort into that as well. I have some really clever things that I... If you're interested, let me know. I could share that because I, I do things a little bit different. I've never seen anyone do a mounting system the way I do, and it's super versatile. Any situation you find yourself in, small, compact, reliable, you're not going to drop a $10,000 camera rig. Um, and I, I could share that with you. But that's it. That's my kit. When I'm done, simply unhook it, shut it down, and now I have all that expensive equipment protected in here, waterproof. I can throw it in the back of the truck. I can throw it in the tractor bucket. Um, I never have to worry about it. If it starts raining where I'm at, I can close it up. It's a great, great system. And it's literally over a decade in the making. So <laughs> that's what, what I have. So thanks for watching. And may God bless you and your families. And we'll see you guys on the next video.